Good morning, YouTubers. Hope you guys are all doing absolutely fantastic. It is about 7 a.m. I'm just headed into the studio, and you guys have been asking for another vlog, the hunt for vintage drums and unique snare drums. But unfortunately, I've gone to the shops that I can drive to, and with the COVID restrictions and everything, I'm obviously not traveling and I'm not doing clinic tours, so I can't really go to any other drum shops. The first shop I went to was a four hour drive there and back. The second shop I went to was a three hour drive there and back. I'm kind of out of shops to go to. So I figured today I would take you to the Mike's Lesson Studio because most of you have only seen the angles that I show you, but you've never seen around the studio unless you've been to camp. And I have, uh, I don't know how many snare drums I have, but I. I know I have over 30 snare drums at the studio and they're all super unique. So I thought that would be a really cool chance for me to talk you through some of the snare drums that I have and more importantly, why I have them in my collection. How long is this light gonna take? My goodness. By the way, if you have been to camp, then you will recognize, well, you probably can't see from the GoPro, but I'm driving through Old Town Folsom. There's a gorgeous truck blocking the awesome sites, but this is a uh, old town left over from the gold mining times. Uh, so 1880s, this little street was established and all the buildings are the same. The people aren't the same, obviously, but the buildings are. Brother John, how are you, my friend? All open for food? 25%. I'll take it, I'll take it. Are the flatbreads back? Yeah. That's all I need to know. Later, buddy. So that was John, the owner of Reset Cafe, and it's just an awesome cafe with amazing flatbreads, and honestly, very, very good matcha. Now we are headed, if you probably can't see out the window because it's probably overexposed, but the Lake Natoma Inn is right in front of me, and that's where our campers stay. And now we are headed to mikeslessons.com studios. <laughs> So we are here at the mikeslessons.com studio. Like I said, there's the Lake Natoma Inn. So that's where the campers stay when they're in town. And then they just walk right over here to the studio. Stairs, we're about to see how well the in-body image stabilization on the Canon R5 is. Doesn't look too shaky. I'm literally jogging up these stairs. And there's our studio. Hey Juno. Hi sweetie. Where are you going? June? Come on, go to work. Here is the Mike'sLessons.com studio. This is our lobby area, snare wall, painting of Buddy Rich. Well, it's not really a painting. It's made out of roofing tar. So you can see from the side the texture. So it's made out of roofing tar, tile glue. There's actually no paint. And then the surface is a door. So it's made out of all construction materials. The guy that made that for me, Greg Fisher, also built my cymbal boxes and my snare shelves there. This is our lobby area for the campers to hang out in. Then we go in here to my newly renovated office. So this has now become the podcast room. A little bit more matte black ship lab a wall for diffusion since I'm actually speaking here when I'm doing the podcast. And then some more snares. Can never have enough snares. We'll talk more about snares in a little bit. Oh, June. Do you love snares? Juno, do you love snares? Heck yeah, you do. And this is my private lesson room. So when the campers are here, this is the only room that has two kits in it. At the end of every camp, we take a little mosh picture. That one got a little bit out of hand. Look at Matt Brush just going full bananas. Love it. So this is the private lesson room. And like I said, I mean, it's really the only place where during camp we can actually have drum games and jam because it's the only room that has two kits. Then we go to this hallway here and these are the cymbal boxes. Everyone always asks me about them. I think that a lot of people think they're for decoration. These are just so that the campers have access to the cymbals. So it's always a full set and then they can just unscrew this right here, take off whatever they want. So we've got the Mino Byzance traditional series here, some Byzance dual, got some of the sand series, some of Benny's stuff, and then a full set of the vintage pure here. Now onto the main room. 
All right, so this is my main room. This is where I film everything from mikeslessons.com, YouTube, Instagram, and this is also where we hold our camp. So the campers have their little spots. Usually we have eight of these kits, but because of COVID and we haven't had camps in a while, I just took out the front row so I could put up my lights and cameras and stuff. So I'll walk you through a little bit of the gear. Key light is an Aperture 120D Mark II. Then I've got another one of those up here. Then I've got another light down here. This, I think this is a Photo Deox flap jack, and that's just kind of illuminating the side of the kit for my side angle. My main camera, shigadaboop, is this guy right here, the Canon C70. Love this camera. This is my favorite camera on the planet right now. And then I've got a Sigma Arc 24 mil 1.4 lens. And then side angle is another Canon C70 with the exact same lens. So this camera gets this angle. And then my main camera is kind of my speaking angle. Then usually I have a third camera attached to that mount up there, but I'm actually holding that third camera right now, which is the Canon R5. Uh, so we've got our floor lights, which are the Astera AX1 light tubes. I've got another flat LED up there illuminating the heads. That's why everyone always says like, man, your heads always look so brand new. They are not even remotely brand new looking. It's just that this light up here overexposes them a little bit so they look that way. So this is what I see when I'm filming content. On to the next room, Uncle Phil. So this is here, this is the only thing I've ever had printed out. I've been on the cover of Modern Drummer, Drum Magazine, Rhythm Magazine, but I've never printed anything out that I've been in except for this. This is the very first time I was ever in an ad in a magazine with my hero, Phil Collins. Look how young me and Mark look. Taylor's all about that armpit life, love it. Okay, so this is the control room. It's also where the campers will sit when a camper is out on the kit performing. They sit in here and watch, which just adds to the nerves. Uh, but this is the control room where my wife, Amber, controls all the cameras during our live streams. So mikeslessons.com, for those of you that don't know, is just a two-person operation. It's me and Amber. She controls the cameras from here. I uh, just got this yesterday, so this is the new Blackmagic ISO. I'll be setting that up later. But honestly, for a while, I've just been using this Roland video mixer. This is another place I can do podcasts from. And yeah, so that's the control room. Then off to the tea room. So this is kind of just an organized storage space for lenses, some microphones, but most importantly, it's where I keep all my tea. This is not a dispensary, this is tea. Ooh, a little bit of good matcha sencha, maybe a little kukicha to get your day started. Then up here, I've got all my teaware and the good stuff, the matcha itself. And then our camp candles, hello. This is also where I store my bike. We are on the American River bike trail uh, that connects right to our parking lot. So I usually, I'll film until about 2 p.m. on a nice sunny day, and then I will go for a long bike ride to clear my head. I've got my fridge down there, microwave, more tea paraphernalia. Moving on. So this is the back practice room. So when the campers are here and they're just getting a little sick of sitting next to each other and they need somewhere else to go, they have this back room that they can go into. More symbol boxes. So we've got extra dry, dark, the old M series, the jazz series, traditional brilliant, classics customs, dark. Oh, what are these called? I don't even remember these. Pure alloy, some more extra dries some classics customs, and what? Varsity Blues, get out of town. That's an old movie. If any of you remember that, I'd be shocked. So yeah, so this is the another practice room, a bunch of reflex pads for them to get in on, and if they want to torture themselves, they have access to the beatnik. And that, my friends, is my studio. All right, so now that you guys have seen the studio, I have about 38 snare drums around the place, 
but I always have 20 on display here on the snare wall, so I'll walk you through them as quick as I can, and I'll do my very best not to mess up the actual specs on the drums, but I might miss a few, and then after that, I'll walk you through some of my favorites that you'll actually get to hear today. So, starting off, we've got the new reissue of the Rogers Dynasonic snare. Pick that up at Dub's Drum Basement. 14 by six and a half Ludwig Black Beauty. We've got a 14 by five and a half Danette Titanium. This is a really special drum. This is a 13 by six solid cherry snare made for Modern Drummer's 40th anniversary by Bruce Hagwood at RBH. We've got a 14 by five and a half ANF Raw Brass. Back down here, we've got another Ludwig Black Beauty. This is a 14 by five hammered shell. 14 by five Maple Brooks Drum Company snare with split lug design. Then we've got an ANF Raw Copper snare, a 14 by five aluminum snare by Drum Supply Company in Nashville, Tennessee. Then we've got a 14 by five Raw Brass snare coming down here. 14 by five raw steel snare. This is a 1960s Gretsch 14 by five and a half Dixieland snare. Then we've got a, another 14 by five and a half 60s Slingerland uh, Radio King student model snare drum. Super special snare to me. I'll talk about this more later, but this is a 14 by five and a half Maple DW snare with tube lugs. Then we've got a 14 by five Poplar snare from Sugar Percussion in GT Silver Metallic coming down here. Uh, if you guys saw the Gretsch video, the one, this is the 14 by five raw bronze snare that I played in that video. Then we've got a 1920s Ludwig 14 by four here. This is just the king of all snares. 14 by five and a half Ludwig super sensitive mahogany snare from 1929. I believe there were only 29 of these made with the decorative inlay. Then we've got a 14 by five and a half oak snare from Bucks County Drum Company. And then down at the end, we've got another 14 by five and a half Gretsch 1960s snare, but this is in a super, super hard to find finish called Starlight Sparkle. So those are all of my snare drums, at least the ones that are on display. So now I'm gonna walk you through a couple of my favorites. Well, thank you, Juno. All right, so first up is the reissue of the Rogers Dynasonic. You guys saw me pick this up at Dub's Drum Basement in Dublin, California. We talked a little bit about how the strainer just comes straight up. So instead of being pulled from side to side, the strainer goes straight up and it's just such a cool thing. This drum has a really good combination of vintage and modern sounds. And I think like it just has almost like a studio sound. It sounds like it has a little bit of built-in compression. So let's give it a listen. Now, just to be clear, I'm choosing snares here that one, have a story, but two, sound quite different than my snare, the Gretsch Brooklyn Standard, because you guys have heard that on the channel for two straight years now. So this is definitely one that sounds a lot different. 13 by six, solid cherry snare, but it does have this little inlay right here, which is a veneer of curly maple. So it has a really cool look to it. Solid cherry, uh, got reinforcement rings and it can be cranked to be full 311 or you can just have it super loose and have that gushy sound. Now, I think I said this was a 14 by five when I went through it the first time, but it looks like it's a 14 by four. This is that Brooks Drum Company snare that I picked up at Dub's Drum Basement when I also got the Rogers Dynasonic drum. So this is just a maple snare drum. And I gotta say, if you want just a clean, flawless snare, this drum honestly reminds me a lot of the original Craviato snares. It's just clean and flawless. It would be great for funk. I mean, obviously you can kind of do everything with it, but it just has that snappy funk tone to it.
All right, now if you've been following me for a while on YouTube, you will recognize this snare because I had a full kit and I used it for a long time on my YouTube videos when I was a DW artist. So this is a 14, thank you. This is a, I'll get to you soon. This is a 14 by five and a half DW maple snare. Uh, it's got an exotic maple finish on the outside. It's got these really cool, now Juno's bothering Amber, who's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gino, please, I'm trying to do my job here. So <laughs> it's got these really tight pinstripes, but the most important thing is it's got tube lugs, and that was not an easy thing to get DW to do at the time, because I was like, man, those big lugs are just a little too much for me on the snare. Is there any way you could do tube lugs? And they did. So I don't have the kit anymore, but I do have the snare. This is one of the first snares that DW made with the maglev throw off. Um, and I just love this thing. It's a, and I'm actually not going to play it for you right now. I'm going to show you an old clip of me playing it at a drum festival, my very first drum festival way back in the day. Right now, YouTubers, before you start typing, just know when I said that I played this snare in one of my first drum festivals, I really thought I did. Then I edited this whole video, I was almost done with it, and I was like, okay, let me fly in the clip of the festival. I went and did that, I was like, woo! Mike Johnston going crazy back in the day with his faux hawk and his Obey t-shirts. And then all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, I didn't play that snare. I played the kit, but not the snare. But I still wanna keep that clip in there because it was such an important day to me. It was the day that I, kind of went from being a touring drummer in rock bands into a drum set clinician. It was also a day that I became really close with so many of the people that I'm still close with today. Dante Roberson, Eric Moore, Aaron Green, Stefan DeBose. So I made some true friendships that day and I'm just gonna leave that clip in there because it means a lot to me. So on to the next snare. All right, this is the 14 by five sugar percussion poplar snare and it is in actual GT silver metallic. So Jefferson over at Sugar found out that I got a car that is the same as his favorite car company. He asked me what color it was. He called the factory in Germany, got the paint code and made me a snare to match my new car, which I mean, who does stuff like that? That's just absolutely amazing. But the really cool thing is not the color, it's how amazing this drum sounds. This is a super versatile snare and because it's popular, I think I don't, don't freak out if I'm wrong, but I think this is probably his most affordable snare drum that you can get. And it's just fantastic. You got your gross grain ribbon for the throw and for the, for the snare wires, pure sound snare wires, trick throw off, just a gorgeous drum. Last but not least, the most rare snare drum I own. So this is a super sensitive, old, old 1929 Ludwig with decorative inlay. Uh, like I said, I think they only made 29 of these. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a mahogany shell. But the thing that I love about this drum is it truly is a period piece. You know, the 1920s Ludwig brass snare that I have, that actually doesn't sound like a period piece. It sounds as modern as any metal snare drum. This, as soon as you play it, it's like, oh, we're in the 1920s, 1930s. And so I just love it. Original snare wires. Uh, I don't have the original heads, obviously, but it still totally functions. The throw functions just fine. It's an awesome drum. And I actually got this from Nelson Drum Shop in Nashville, Tennessee.
All right, so those are some of my favorite snare drums. I hope you guys had fun watching this and seeing the studio. And hopefully, when COVID is over, you guys will be able to come here to drum camp and hang out at the studio and play all of my snare drums. Huh, Juno? Okay, all right. Bye, guys.